Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. A couple things I want to say, uh, just precautions. Transmissions are extremely heavy. They're awkward to put in a position. If you are doing this at home with one or two or three people, uh, it is very difficult to get some of these things, some of these things in place. Um, you want to do one or two things. If I had to do it myself or with just one person and I don't have a lift, I would recommend that you pull the engine and transmission out the top, set it down on the floor with some kind of uh, uh, pallets or rollaways or something like I did when I did the rear main seal with DOS bricks, uh, Ken, and separate it, put it back together like that. If you choose to lower the subframe of the car, really you need to set the whole thing on the ground. We left the engine uh, braced up in the car and just tilted it down and that was very difficult to pull that off. So you're better off setting it on the ground or pulling both units out the top, setting it on the ground to do this. Other than that, you're really going to have some struggles. It took us four people in about an hour to bolt that transmission to the engine. A special tool you may need to have is a uh, clutch alignment tool that'll help you get the clutch and pressure plate on quicker and easier. It's a very inexpensive tool. You also want this special uh, bolt thread lock compound for putting flywheels on to the engine and um, you know you just are going to need a lot of tools and equipment to get this done. Since you'll have the engine and trans out, you want to make sure that you have any associated parts that are going bad, like front and rear hydraulic engine mounts. If those things are bad, you want to go ahead and place them. When you're going from a automatic to manual, your computer will function a little differently. It's good to get a tune if you can, which should improve some of the characteristics of the function of the car. My car had a, a M, I believe, uh, uh, fuel injection system 4.3. It was upgraded to a 4.4, which is more like the 98 cars. Changed a couple things emission-wise uh, and should cause the car to start faster run a little smoother at highway speeds may save a little gas because I'm also changing my fuel injectors uh, white is preferred with the T5 models I don't think I have any whites with me I may put a set of blues in if you get the transmission that mates with your car example uh, the 94 and the 95 transmissions mate well with the 95 and older cars because of the slave cylinder and the speed sensor that plugs into the back, if you get a transmission that doesn't mate with the car, you'll have to uh, get wires out of your P and P switch, get those wired up correctly to get your reverse light working right and get your cruise light, uh, your cruise working. If you get the one that matches with your car, you know, 96 and newer, with a 96 and newer car, you shouldn't have those issues because of the ABS system and the speed sensor system that's in that. You may or may not want to replace your throttle cable. It is a little bit different, I think, in length between auto and manual. Not a big deal. Most people can't recognize the difference. So, Before I get started, I want to give a shout out to, first of all, the Volvo community. Uh, the Volvo community is by far the best for getting information to help you accomplish things like this. 
manual swaps, just regular maintenance stuff like that. There's not too many uh, automobile communities that have as good as information from my experience. I've taken with BMWs, Nissans, and others. And man, you know, you can really good get decent information to help you uh, complete the task that you're trying to accomplish. Man, I was working on my friend's Nissan. I couldn't even get information on how to change the power steering pump without somebody getting challenged and petty. So special shout out to them. I want to uh, give a shout out to Ben at Rolling Motors Inc. He helped me get some of the parts that I needed, genuine Volvo stuff, to uh, get the manual uh, put in and serviced properly. Uh, Swedish car parts, those guys are enthusiasts. They sent me uh, secondary parts that I needed to service the car uh, besides the manual swap. Um, a guy named Alex, he helped me with a tune for the car. He's not a tuner, but he helped me get the first step in getting this car tuned. For the manual, uh, Brendan and uh, another guy uh, named Chris, I believe, helped with some of the hands on stuff. And a very special thanks to my buddy Dan and Kalamazoo. You know, it was fun and a pleasure to hang out with Dan for a few days. I don't think it could have been more fun anywhere else. You know, he was gracious enough to uh, help me and allow me to do this at his location in his uh, personal uh, residence so special shout out to these guys and uh, let's get started if you feel that this information was useful please like it and share it with your social media friends you can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post you can follow me on Twitter and if you need to contact me directly please visit my website and if you have any questions leave them below and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.